Joining me now is currently Congressman Ellison, um, who is now a new candidate for Attorney General, uh, and he joins me now. Congressman Ellison, welcome back to Meet the Press Daily. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. All right, so you are running for AG instead of re-election to Congress. It, it, it strikes me, and I've heard this from others, um, why, Attorney General, why, what do you believe that post will give you an opportunity to do that you can't do in Congress? You know, it'll allow me to be the people's lawyer, a lawyer that will uh, fight for them, for their consumer rights, for their rights as workers and employees, for their uh, rights as uh, people who need civil rights protection. It'll allow me to protect seniors who are often victims of scams and abuses and mistreatment, and it'll allow me to help veterans and people all over the state of Minnesota. Also, uh, the attorneys general uh, work together on things to stand mm -hmm. up. Uh, on the administration's rules to weaken the internet and block it and make it more in the hands of the private interests and things like uh, trying to weaken the census and interfere with that. And of course, we all know uh, that it has been the secretaries of state, I mean, secretaries general who've come together uh, for, uh, to protect people's civil rights after the uh, president had the, and tried to institute the travel ban, which of course is still in the courts. You, um, if Democrats get control of the House, um, you could do a lot of those things with a majority in the House, subpoena power, chairmanships with the ability to convene, you know, hearings, if, whether, whether, you know, it's a group that's, you know, the drug manufacturers with opioids, things like that. There's certainly a lot of ability, everything you just talked about, there's a lot of ability to do that if you have a majority in the House, which right now looks uh, like a good possibility. So why, why risk potentially you could lose this election and suddenly not be in either place? That's true. But let me tell you, when I talk to Minnesotans, whether it's uh, in, in the greater Minnesota or in the cities or in the suburbs, they're telling me about their concerns about being taken advantage of in student loans, uh, in nursing homes all over the state. They're telling me about these critical problems. And, you know, Chuck, before I was ever a congressperson, I was a lawyer, and I did that work for about 16 years, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed the ability to just get in there and fight for people, uh, particularly people who didn't have anybody uh, on their side when they're up against powerful interests. That's the kind of thing that has always made me feel personally uh, satisfied. And yeah. uh, I'll continue to work with my fellow colleagues in Congress and in the state legislature to protect Minnesotans, because we need to work together, good laws and good law enforcement. Is there, um, is there something the Trump administration has done that you think uh, attorneys general should be confronting that they haven't yet? Um, or is this one of those you're like, you see that they're having some progress and you see your own opportunities here? Well, no, this is about service. This is about public service. And I want to be part of that fight to protect the public's interests, which I think the Trump administration has stepped on on many occasions. But, you know, they're coming up with new stuff every day. You know, uh, a while back, Chuck, they tried to pass a rule that said that the tips that workers got in restaurants belonged to the owner. We were able to fight that back. But what if something like that comes up in the future? I want to be able to uh, protect uh, people who labor hard every day, people who work hard. I've been, and in Congress, I have been leading the fight on wa against wage theft. So I think that it's a matter of confronting uh, the, the violations of people's rights wow. uh, and really being on the, the fighter for, for ordinary working Americans. Uh, you, uh, it's my understanding for now, you would like to keep your position as deputy chair of the DNC. Um, I imagine that's pretty awkward, though, right? You're now participating in a party primary, and I know the party process in the DFL in Minnesota, it's, shall we say, loud um, and, and very rambunctious sometimes. Is it going to be tough for We're you to— We're spirited oh, Yes. Tough for you to hold a national party position and be participating in primary? Well, you know, it's common for uh, um, member elected officials to also be active in party building. This is a regular thing, and uh, I will be devoting well more than, than uh, 60, 70 hours a week as Minnesota's attorney general. And I'll also help strengthen the Democratic Party so we can advance values of inclusion and fairness in our economy and uh, opportunity for everybody. Well, as you know, there's some among certain segments of the Democratic Party, there's, there's some distrust of the DNC chair, Tom Perez, and a lot of Sanders supporters in particular see you as their guy, right? As their, as the person that's watching, that's watching things at the DNC on behalf of sort of the Sanders wing of the party. 
Um, does this mean you're not going to be as active in the DNC this cycle? Well, you know, I'm going to be focused on winning my uh, uh, attorney's general race. But look, you know, uh, there will be plenty of time between now and the foreseeable future uh, and, and to really focus on helping to build the Democratic Party. And I, let me just say, you know, Tom and I are unified in our commitment to running in every race all the time uh, and, not, and not letting any, uh, any particular race uh, go unfought for. We're, we're committed to 24-7 uh, every, every race and every, and every year. So we're going to continue to do that, but that's going to be a long-term project. It's going to take a whole lot of people, and it's, but it's also going to take us here in Minnesota to do our part, and I will be holding that down. I got to ask you about this controversy involving the DNC chair's endorsement of Andrew Cuomo in New York. Bernie Sanders unhappy about it. It's my understanding um, you were among folks not happy about him publicly endorsing. Was that done in error? Was that a mistake? Um, is that something that, 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 that you regret happened? It was an individual decision based on a very long-term relationship that he had with uh, those, those individuals. Uh, our, our, our main policy, our default policy, is still uh, to, to not get involved in primaries uh, for DNC officers. So this is a one-time thing, and, and there isn't going to be any more endorsements from you or him in primaries? You won't see any endorsements from me in primaries. All right, Congressman Keith Ellison, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC MTP and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.